to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Eurovision scandals. Yes, of course, uh, some stress uh, when. Um we listen that some people don't like Russian, of sure. For this list, we're looking at various scandals and controversies that have plagued the popular competition. Which of these scandals do you find the most shocking? Let us know in the comments below. Number 10, Technical Glitch. On behalf of the BBC, welcome to the 8th Annual Eurovision Song Contest. The 1963 Eurovision Song Contest ended in controversy and confusion. When host Katie Boyle asked TV personality Roald Oyen for Norway's votes, Oyen read out preliminary results in the heat of the moment. Well, now we have to go back to Norway for a very decisive vote. These placed Switzerland ahead of Denmark. However, Oyen asked Katie Boyle to come back to them when Norway had properly counted their votes. When she did, the votes were different, resulting in Denmark's win over Switzerland. And the winner of the Eurovision Song Contest Grand Prix is Denmark with the song Dance Visa. Norway was immediately criticised and accused of playing favourites with their Nordic neighbours, and Switzerland protested the results. It remains one of the most disputed endings in Eurovision history. Number 9. Jimmy Jump Spanish streaker Jimmy Jump is known far and wide for his creative interference. He has run onto the field during numerous football matches, including the 2010 FIFA World Cup, onto the track in the 2004 Spanish Grand Prix and onto the court in the 2009 French Open. The following year, he targeted the Eurovision Song Contest. During the performance of Spain's Daniel Digges, Jimmy Jump ran on stage and enthusiastically joined along with the choreography. Digges was forced to continue, albeit while suppressing a grin. <laughs> Jimmy Jump fled the stage when security intervened, but was subsequently caught and arrested. He was fined the equivalent of $1,800. Number 8. Sandra Kim Born Sandra Calderone, Sandra Kim is a Belgian singer and the youngest winner of the Eurovision Song Contest. Unfortunately, this distinction resulted in some significant controversy. <laughs> performed a song titled J'aime la vie at the 1986 contest, and the song's lyrics state that Kim is 15 years old. She won, but it was later revealed that she was actually 13. So runners-up Switzerland petitioned to have her disqualified. Kim's win was upheld, but following some further age-related controversies in 1989, the minimum age requirement was upped to 16. Tina. As such, it's unlikely that Kim's record will ever be broken. Number 7. Jordan Straight Up Lies Israel performed exceptionally well throughout the 1978 Eurovision Song Contest, much to the chagrin of many Middle Eastern and North African broadcasters. When it became obvious that Israel was going to win, many Arabic stations simply stopped airing the show, even though it hadn't finished yet. Jordan took the idea one step further by ending the transmission, displaying photos of daffodils in place of the contest, and falsely claiming that runners-up Belgium had won. Of course, that wasn't the case, as Israel easily won with 157 points. Belgium earned 125. Number 6. A Kiss Finnish singer Krista Sigfrids performed a song called Marry Me at the 2013 Eurovision Song Contest. At the end of her performance, Sigfrids kissed one of her backup singers on the lips, which was said to be an act of protest against Finland's stance on same-sex marriage. Uh -oh. The kiss caused controversy in some socially conservative countries, especially Turkey and China. Turkey refused to air the contest entirely, citing low interest and viewing figures, but many suspected it was in reaction to the kiss. China aired the performance but cut the kiss itself. Thank God! 
Finland legalized same-sex marriage in 2017, having approved it in December of 2014. Number 5. The most controversial win in Eurovision history The 1968 contest has what is by far the most contentious ending in Eurovision history. Cliff Richards' Congratulations was the easy favourite to win. Congratulations and celebration. But it lost to Spain's La 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 in a massive upset. itself was quite controversial, owing to the widespread praise of congratulations and Spain's underdog status. But the real controversy came in 2008, when a Spanish documentary alleged that dictator Francisco Franco had bribed officials to ensure Spain's win over the United Kingdom. Maciel, the singer of La La La, fiercely objected to this assertion. The man who made the claim in the documentary, Spanish journalist Jose Maria Inigo, later apologised for circulating a rumour and claimed that his words were taken out of context. <laughs> Number 4. We Don't Wanna Put In If you think we don't wanna put in sounds like we don't want a put in, then you are not alone. In fact, that was the intention. We don't wanna put in. The song by Stefan and 3G was going to be Georgia's entry in the 2009 competition, which was held in Moscow. However, Georgia was pressured to amend the lyrics, including by New Rights Party of Georgia leader David Gamkrelitz. You better change your perspective. Your life won't be out of love. The European Broadcasting Union also asked them to alter the song, as overtly political lyrics are not allowed in the Eurovision Song Contest. We don't want to Change the lyrics, Georgia withdrew from the competition in protest. Number 3. The Syrian Flag The conflict between Israel and Syria goes all the way back to Israel's declaration of independence in 1948. Major peace efforts were attempted throughout the 90s but proved unsuccessful. Enter the 2000 Eurovision Song Contest and an Israeli band called Ping Pong. <laughs> a joke song called Samayach, which was about an Israeli woman who falls for a Syrian man. At the end of their performance, Ping Pong waved both Syrian and Israeli flags to promote peace between the two countries. Be happy. It caused significant controversy in their home country of Israel, and the band was disowned and sanctioned by the Israel Broadcasting Authority. Number 2. A Sham and Bulletproof Vests Israel's first entrant in the Eurovision Song Contest came in 1973 with Ilanit's A Sham. <laughs> During the previous year's Summer Olympics, Palestinian group Black September orchestrated a notorious attack, kidnapping nine members of the Israeli Olympic team and demanding the release of Palestinian prisoners held in Israeli prisons. At Eurovision the following year, Ilanit wore a bulletproof vest and performed under intense security protection. In fact, British commentator Terry Wogan claimed that the Eurovision audience was instructed to remain seated, otherwise they risked being shot by mistake. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honourable mentions. Stray Dogs Animal activists accused Moscow dog catchers of killing thousands of strays in 2009. The longest kiss in Eurovision history. Danish performers Bertha Wilk and Gustav Winkler share an elongated kiss in 1957. Four winners. In 1969, Spain, the UK, France and the Netherlands all won, prompting a change in point allocation. Booing. 
Anything involving Russia was booed at the 2014 contest, including the Tolmachevi sisters. Russia have a 100% success rate in qualifying for the final. Oh, audience don't seem to like that. Drug rumours. Dubious accusations that Monaskin singer Damiano David did drugs on TV grabbed headlines in 2021. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Starting a Revolution In 1974, ABBA won the Eurovision Song Contest with Waterloo. Waterloo, I was defeated, you walked away. It's a famous song, but that year's Eurovision is perhaps best known for literally starting a revolution. Portugal's entry was Paulo de Cavallo, who performed a song titled E Depois do Adeus. At the time, Portugal was ruled by a regime known as Estado Novo, which had overseen the country since 1933. At 10.55pm on April 24th, 1974, E Depois do Adeus was played over a Portuguese radio station. But this wasn't just any regular song. It was actually the code to begin the Carnation Revolution, which saw the left-leaning armed forces movement overthrow the authoritarian regime. The revolution was successful, leading to a democratic Portugal. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.